Imagine Batman without the fear to kill. In Britain, set in the past. And the country is ruled by communists. Now put all that in the blender. You've got the perfect recipe to make V for Vendetta. This guy is probably one of my favorite superheroes, right along with Batman. So a movie was actually made about this comic book. Yeah, back in 2006. How does the movie hold up? Well, let's take a look and compare it with the original graphic novel. So the original comic book was produced in the 1980s, and it gave a good political message. It kind of made us realize that we aren't as free as we like to think, and this Vendetta guy, he is truly free. So it's a type of comic book which you have to read at least twice in order to get it completely. You also have to be patient to read it, because when I first read it, I probably skipped over a lot of stuff because I thought it was maybe a little bit boring or too many details, so I missed a lot of stuff. So anyways, the it was still a great book nonetheless. Anyways, the movie, however, is a different animal. Where the events in the comic book were set in the past, the events in the movie were set in the present more or less. The, the movie lost the gritty tone and the, the dark atmosphere that the comic book had. And I think that was what made the story what it was. So they, they, they also left out a lot of stuff, like about the computer, and um, I don't remember what the computer's called at the moment, but uh, Helen and Conrad. And how could they leave out there? I mean, if you're wondering who Helen and Conrad are, well, Helen, she's a mega wench. I mean, she really... I hated her. I wanted her to die. I hated her that much. Well, if you're wondering why, read the comic book. You'll find out. Anyways, Evie. What did they do to Evie? They changed her. What is this? This isn't Evie. You know, Evie was a poor girl. She was a victim of the circumstance, victim of society. And the Evie from the movie, she's just... She's a well-to-do girl, and she's doing fine. So they changed her character. They changed her personality. This is an Evie. I'm going to call her Susan or Mary. Yeah, that's right. The movie has Susan. The comic book has Evie. So anyways, this movie leaves out a lot. And hey, you're probably thinking that's normal for movies, right? Well, not when they change the character so much or when they make up their own scenes, or when they change so many details. They should have called this V for Vendetta in the 20 friggin' first century. But hey, this is a movie. Of course you have to change a lot of stuff, because of the limited time. Well, exactly. One movie can't cut it. They should have made it into a trilogy. I mean, imagine the Harry Potter series all put into just one movie. Boom. That would suck. That would be vile. Well, it's a good comparison for V for Vendetta. They need to reboot it. They need to make a series out of this. Just start again and make a series. That's what they should have done. And they, they should have made a movie that's loyal to the source material more. But talking about the movie just as a simple standalone action movie, it would be fine to watch, you know, just sit down, watch something cool with action a little bit of political stuff, you know. As a movie, it's fine, but as an adaptation of the comic book, it's terrible. So, if you haven't read the comic book, you'll probably like this movie. If you have read the comic book, chances are most likely you won't like the movie. And don't just take my word for it. Alan Moore, the, the guy who created the original comic book, he washed his hands of the movie. He distanced himself from it. He, when he saw what it, the movie was becoming, he, he, he didn't want anything to do with it. it. It was too different from the original. They changed it way too much. Anyways, that's all I have to say about it. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thank you for your time. And have a good day, and go watch some Harry Potter. Alright, goodbye.